Hello, uh, I'm going to be trying to do a, uh, another tutorial um, on a song called Her Hands Were Leaves by Alexi Murdoch. Um, about three years ago I tried to do uh, a tutorial like this um, and it was all fine and good except for the fact that the audio was uh, barely audible um, and after having tested it with this webcam it's only slightly better so uh, I hope that you'll be able to hear it, um, and I hope that uh, this tutorial is uh, somewhat helpful. It's not going to be nearly as um, detail-oriented as I, I think I tried to make the last one, but um, I guess we'll see. Um, so I'll just start by playing the piece. <laughs> mistakes that I wrote. So um, that's pretty much my understanding of the song. Um, now, after having listened to it a few times, um, that is the album version of it, um, uh, I think I remember hearing him talking about um, when he was recording this album, Towards the Sun. Um, this, this song, Her Hands Relieved, was actually released um, in, I don't know what you would call it, I guess sort of... Uh, this uh, EP of sorts um, well before um, Towards the Sun was actually released. Um, and Towards the Sun I think only has something like seven songs on it and pretty much all of these uh, songs had already appeared on this EP that was released a good year earlier so there wasn't too much uh, new that was there. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, as far as this song, uh, I remember him saying, uh, well, not, the, not just this song, but really the whole album, um, I remember him saying that he kind of recorded um, it all in uh, one take or one night, or one session, I, sh I should probably say. Um, and so thinking about this song um, and kind of all the little details that go into it, um, I'm kind of tempted to think that there was a little bit of, I don't know if improvisation would be the right word, but um, kind of just things that, um, you know, he would do, like the uh, these little... and the... Um, yeah, like those little hammer-ons and, and pull-offs, uh, kind of quick little embellishments here and there. Um, and then listening to him play it live on the guitar, um, he at, it, it doesn't seem as though he's really consistent um, in, with, uh, with where he's placing these little uh, embellishments. Um, so I, I wasn't, I'm not going to describe, you know, exactly uh, where and when you know, he does uh, these in the song. Um, but if you listen closely and if you really want to have a go at it, you can listen to it for yourself and try to figure that out. Um, what I'll do today is just kind of give you a brief overview. Um, and I'm sorry it took four and a half minutes to get to this point um, of kind of the basics of the song. Um, so first of all, uh, the tuning, it's in an open D tuning, um, meaning that going from your uh, big E string, um, you have, uh, you tune it down to D, 
um, your A string uh, is the same, um, your D string is the same. Um, your G string is going to be tuned down half a step to F sharp. Um, that's what makes this a D major, uh, open D major tuning. Um, and then your uh, B string here is going to be tuned down to uh, an A string. That's two half steps or a whole step down. Um, and then likewise your uh, little E string um, is going to be tuned down to a D. Um, so you have um, three open notes here that um, are in different octaves, but they're the same note. They're all D. You have this low, you have the mid, and then you have the high E. And so when you just strum it open like that, you basically get um, uh, an E-shaped chord. Um, and uh, I say E-shaped because if you were, if this was just standard tuning um, and you were to play an E chord, it would sound like that. Um, and so where I've placed the capo here, um, I, I went off the album version, at least as far as the key that it's in. Um, I'm sure he, that he varies it um, when he plays it live, but um, on the album it's in the key of F, meaning it's uh, capo on the third fret here, um, in case you can't really see. yeah. Um, and uh, where it's positioned is, the, as far as the shape of the first chord and really the main um, backbone to, to the piece, um, is just this shape here, um, which is uh, simply putting your ring finger on the fifth fret of the A string here. Um, and that gives you the same note, it's a D, um, as an open D string, obviously, right? Um, and that's kind of purposefully done um, throughout the piece. That's kind of what makes it sound really nice, I think, is kind of this um, ringing tone. Um, and then when he adds the quick little hammer-ons here and there, um, it, it makes it sound pretty cool. Um, and I'll try to discuss that a little bit more. Um, and then as far as going back to the shape here, so it's um, index finger or rather ring finger on the 5th fret of the A string and then your index finger on the 3rd fret of the G string here. Um, and what that's giving you is the same uh, sound as what you just have with the open B string which is tuned down to A. So this is, these are both um, the exact same note, same octave. So we, we kind of have um, this uh, ringing note phenomenon going on twice here. Again, I think it was done pretty purposefully. Um, and if you listen closely enough at times, you can, you can hear um, when he's playing, say, that versus... And the first one was um, on the G string, the second one was on the B string. Um, and so as far as the pattern, um, really the most complicated part, and I said this in, in the last tutorial, not that you could really hear it, um, but uh, is, is it's really just um, the finger picking. As far as the left hand shapes, I mean, yeah, the, the quickness of the hammer-ons and, and the timing and placement of them can be kind of hard, but um, the finger picking is really, once you get that down, you can, you can kind of um, get a good feel for the, for the song. Um, so it goes. Actually, if you yeah, yeah, very early on, it's just um, the first two notes. It, it's kind of quiet. It just goes. So it's just hitting the A string and the D string um, to kind of start that off, and then he just jumps into. That was just kind of like the first shape before moving on to the next. Um, and again, if you li could listen closely there, um, and I don't know how well you can see it on, on my right hand here, I tried to position the camera so that you could see it. Um, if you listen closely, you can see, um, like I was saying, where um, he's playing versus... So it's really got a nice um, ringing. 
sound to it. Um, and so yeah, um, that first little hammer on is really just going, um, it's again on the uh, A string here, um, hammering real quick from the uh, fourth fret to the fifth fret. Right? And then almost simultaneously after that, um, he just hits the open D string. So that takes a little bit of practice as well. Um, and then right after that, so it's it's kind of like three hits if you look at it that way. Um, it goes. So in a sense, it's like kind of playing the the same note, um, even though it's on two different strings. It's like playing the same note um, three times uh, pretty quickly. You can kind of just do that back and forth. It sounds kind of nice. It happens in uh, a few of my uh, favorite songs. Um, and then the other little hammer-on that he does is the, which I find a little harder, um, the Um, and that's going with your middle finger and your pinky um, on the to the fourth fret um, to the fifth fret uh, on the next string next string down the D string. So um, you have this shape here. The so that's a fifth fret fourth fret. I'll just play it with a one note now. So it's, yeah, it's, it's like a really quick um, four, five, four type of thing. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard for me to even do because it's it's the pinky. It's you know your, your weakest finger, um, so it's kind of hard to do the hammer on with that. And it's so quick, and he places it so seamlessly into um, the rhythmic um, finger picking pattern that he has. So if we just kind of practice around like that um, every now and then, I, f I find it pretty helpful, um, again, to get a feel for the song. Um, now, this kind of work gets complicated in terms of having to describe it. Um, the actual pattern of the finger picking, because um, to my knowledge, there's no real tabs out there for this still, three years later. Um, uh, I could be wrong, because I uh, haven't really looked at, heard, listened to the song as much since. Um, but Basically, the finger picking pattern, uh, I kind of have to do it to. Yeah, so um, it would be, and I'll just um, explain this in terms of what the standard tuning would be, um, just to make it easier uh, to know what strings I'm talking about here. Um, it's going to be. So, E. Again, that's E, D, A, G. So it's kind of going like back and forth a little bit. E, D, A, G. Um, and if you can just practice that, um, you know, a number of times, just get it pretty quickly. Um, try to get the rhythm down, the tempo. And then you can throw in, uh, you know, the hammer-ons. saying um, hitting this uh, open uh, B string um, it's it's kind of alternates and you and like, it's kind of like you can choose uh, when you want to um, get that sort of uh, tone out of it because um, you have two choices basically you can stick with the those would all be the same notes um, but if you again if you listen closely to the song it's um, certain points, um, and I tried to emphasize that a little bit there. Um, so 
Yeah, every now and then, instead of hitting, essentially the only difference uh, in that pattern is um, on the very last note, because I know I said it was E, D, A, G. Instead of doing E, D, A, G, you would do E, D, A, B. Um, so... So I hope that's uh, kind of clear there. Um, so that's really the first shape. Okay, um, and then he goes down, uh, which I think is a really pretty chord. Um, and again, the finger picking pattern is pretty much the same. Um, as far as the shape of the chord, um, it's basically, again, referring to standard tuning. Um, if you were to play an E7 chord, I think you would call it. Um, not really big on chord names a lot of times. Um, but all it would be would be the uh, middle finger on the second fret of the A string and your index finger on the first fret of um, the G string. Um, and uh, yeah, I haven't really mentioned this until now, but um, when I'm referring to the fret numbers, uh, I'm ref I'm doing it with respect to this capo here, um, as if that was uh, the nut, I think it's called. Um, it's kind of a funny name, but um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty much the same pattern. It's Just um, again, E, D, A, G, um, and f usually it's 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 just that. But every now and then again, uh, and and here the difference is more noticeable because they're two different notes. Whereas before, if you were doing that same finger picking pattern with the right hand. two notes are the same there at the end, but here if you go, they're two different um, notes there. So um, again, just kind of listen and uh, play it as you will, um, but the finger picking pattern is pretty much the same. Um, and then it goes to this other shape, which again I find really, really nice. Um, and that's just uh, at the seventh fret, pretty much all across the board. It's um, let's see. I guess the, the the way I do it. I guess there are different ways you can do it, but I find the easiest way to do it is um, by using my thumb. I know some people find it hard um, to use your thumb, um, and it's it's probably improper uh, guitar technique, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I just do this thumb on the seventh fret of. Um, the big E string, and then middle finger on the s seventh fret of the A string. Um, your D string is going to be open, and then um, it's convenient, most convenient, to use your um, ring finger uh, to go on the seventh fret of the G string here. And again, the I'm pretty sure the finger picking pattern is the same. So yeah, it's um, E D A G, um, and again, there's kind of alternating uh, places where he goes. So you just kind of have to listen closely again. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it, you know. At some point in the song, yeah, he goes like that. It's where she's kind of adding a little bit more complicated. I guess I can describe that um, before finishing up um, this 20 plus minute video. Um, so it's just. So that's really us utilizing all six strings. Um, so you're starting with the basic, you know, E, D, A, G. And then you're going as if you're playing it again, and then you're finishing with the a... 
so that's just um, playing your little E string. Um, again, it's uh, an alternating pattern here now, I have to think of it, uh, how I'm going to describe it. It's, um, Okay, so it's um, E, A, you know, it's really hard to uh, elucidate these, how I'm, how I'm playing this, you know, I could just play it over and over, but I can't talk, you know, exactly what it is. Uh, <laughs> so it's... Uh, too hung up on the details as I said I wouldn't um um anyway again it's just one of those things you can uh kind of figure out on your own I'll just have to leave it at that um but yeah that was pretty much it um this until now um, uh, for like the verse pattern where he goes um, you know where he's actually singing the lines and no I'm not going to sing it because I only have one instrument here and my voice isn't one of them um, it just it, all he's doing is it's pretty simple it's just kind of returning to those little embellishments right It's um, going from that starting position to um, referring, like if we were to look at this uh, in a tab, going from your big E string down, um, uh, it would just be 0, 5, 0, 3, 0, uh, and then 0 again for little E string. Um, and then, the, yeah, that was the first shape I described um, kind of at the beginning. And then all you're doing is moving. Uh, your A string from the 5th fret to the 4th fret. So, and the, again, the finger picking pattern is the same. It's just um, E, D, A, G. Kind of ending on that, um, on the A string. Right? I hope this was uh, somewhat helpful. Um, I know it really wasn't a totally comprehensive overview of the song. I hope it was audible. Um, <laughs> so I apologize for that first video um, not really being too loud, but hopefully this one was a little bit better. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, I'll do my best to uh, try to address them. But um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of time. That's why I don't really do too many tutorial videos. and wasn't expecting this one to take nearly as long as it was. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening.